Right, I've got to change this starter today. Um, they're, uh, the contact has failed and I think they're obsolete now and also some of these works in here before and they've lost the, um, the extension that joins the, the handle to the actual switch block so it's not safe anyway. Um, and we've got one of these Lovato um, starters with a built-in switch. It's actually it's a, it's a Lovato made in Italy um, but RS components badge it up as their own from their own brand products. And you can tell we're on a farm because the light fitting doesn't work. Uh, so we'll have to rig something up so we can see what we're doing. Right, luckily that light's staying on now, but we've, we've got that one set up. <coughs> Just in case. Uh, that's the contact that's failed. Um, and that's the switch. That bit in the centre should have another piece that extends it out to here for that to uh, engage with. <coughs> So we've got to work out where that's fed from. It's in one of these panels that uh, three phase, so <coughs> we'll have to go around turning them off and seeing which one it is. Right, I'd look in here. Um, and we've got two so we've got two, two units the same, so we're looking for two breakers the same size. We've got two 10 amp ones, so I thought they were likely. Um, because these two here have run off of that panel. So that panel will have one, one live feed to it, <coughs> and then it splits. So that's probably on a 32 amp. <coughs> uh, yep, something like that. Anyway, so we've turned them two off, and that was, luckily, it's, it's one of them two. So we'll, we'll probably label these up when we're finished. <clears throat> yeah, so we can get the wires out, we'll pull them out through here so they're out of the way, put some tape on them, uh, then we can get this out of the way and uh, see how well that lines up. It's a bit longer which is not too bad. Uh, might just have to kick that one over a bit. Okay, that's the old one out of the way. Um, if you can't remember where the wires go, uh, you're better off drawing it out, um, make a little sketch or something. I have to have pictures on my phone before and then had the phone die in between putting it back together, so I tend to rely on a picture, a uh, picture or a sketch rather than a photo, you know, something you've done with your phone or camera. Um, anyway, that's a Three phase for the compressor. That was our control circuit, and the red and blue uh, was the uh, crankcase here. But you, you can always go to the other end and uh, work it out. They're not that complicated. Once you get the ones you know out of the way, I mean, that's those three. We know that's the compressor, we know that's the earth. Um, so, you know, you've only got four wires to figure out then. That's the new one. We can do away with this bit because that is a starter if you were using it on a motor. Start and stop it. And this is automatic start. So that, that can go. We've got to put overload relay in here to suit the uh, compressor. Um, that's our switch power in the top. Um, probably neutral on there. Or earth we might just, I don't think we, we could have done with another terminal block in here really. Just have to put a terminal strip in there or something. <coughs> so that is the top one so we can we can probably move, move that out the way get that mounted in line with that. Um, and these look like they could be 20mm in the centre and 25 on the outside. And they've got a little dot in them, dimple in the centre 
for your hole saw drill bit to line up with. So th these are all on DIN rails, so they just usually just uh, lift out. That'll come out, so that's that all out of the way. So we're not going to drill a hole in the top when we make that hole. Okay, got these uh, Starrett hole saws, um, got a really thin wall on them and a quarter inch um, uh, thingy, can't think of the word, um, arbor, because um, they're thin wall they, they don't take a lot of battery power to cut through, 20 mil, our conduit here is usually 20 mil which is about three quarters, 25 which is about inch, um, and I think the next size up is 32 mil. But you don't ever see 32 mil conduit. It goes into being trunking. Um, but you can get the um, brass bushes for uh, joining. If you were butting that box up against the trunking, you could put a 32 mil bush in it or something. <coughs> Which is probably inch and a quarter. Anyway, enough of that. Um, we get that hole drilled out. Get that hole drilled out, and then we'll see how these tubes line up. The other good thing with these um, is they have a bit of a ridge in them here so if you're drilling into something uh, it, will only, it will only go in so far and it won't go any further. So if you're drilling in with cables and stuff in there um, you, you're not going to go in and cut into them. Right, I've got the uh, box on the wall. Um, I've had to put a longer bush in there because this plastic's so thick, it wasn't, the feds weren't catching. Um, luckily, I just got away with just shortening this piece. So I went around it with a pipe cutter so I didn't damage the cables. Just cleared a new end on there. Um, and because the wall's not level, I've had, the piece of plastic I used to, I drilled out of that hole, I've actually put it behind here to pack it so it's sitting level on the wall now. So I've uh, just got to wire it up. Okay, so that's all on there. Doesn't look very level actually. I think we might have to loosen that screw and move the top over. Um, so that's our neutral. These are these are wired up in the old colours. Used to be red uh, blue and yellow for the phases and black for neutral on three phase stuff and then if you had a piece of flex like you'd have in your lead lamp or that it would have been brown and blue for your live and neutral so when you work on this stuff you, a blue could be a phase or it could actually be a um, could be a neutral so uh, you need to know what you're doing really um, we did work at a factory once and they'd had their maintenance guy put another socket in the kitchen and all he'd done was gone up in the trunk in and got a red wire and thought well that's a lie and tapped into it found a blue wire and thought well that's a that's a neutral and tapped into that and he actually had 415 volts coming out the normal 240 volt socket so the kettle boiled very quickly <laughs> um, but the uh, staff there kept blowing up their mobile phone chargers um, yeah, a little knowledge is dangerous, as, as they say. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that, that's going to go in the top. <coughs> that's our little auxiliary. Just snaps in. You've got that little piece that goes in the bottom. Slides in the bottom. Just to so it's got sort of slides on there. So it's got the two feet, and then those little clips they lock into the top of the contactor so when that pulls in it pulls the top ones in. Okay anyway let's get this done. Right that's that done. What I usually do is just to make sure I haven't messed it up is uh, I'll sort of start and go right live in through the switch around here up to the top straight through 
out again onto the compressor, so that's good. And then that one also comes up here onto this normally closed contact, goes through, down to the crankcase heater, back up the crankcase heater into the air, which is a neutral, which goes all the way out. It also goes around to the coil. Next phase comes in straight through, around these loop wires into the centre one, straight out onto that one, to the compressor. Third phase through the switch, round here, straight through onto the compressor. And then up here we've got control circuit, goes on permanent live off of the, into the uh, contactor, goes on the orange wire. Go all the way down here, go to the pressure switch, come back up into the overloads. And on these ones, some of the other ones, you'd have to put a little wire in here and loop it around into the coil. But these ones have got an internal wire with, a, with an extra terminal that sticks out here. So as long as they do that screw up in here, it go through. And then we've got the neutral, the coil is on that wire. So that looks okay. And we've set the overloads, so that's the other thing you've got to remember to do. Because they usually come out of the packet, they'll be set on the lowest setting. Right, it should probably start up if I turn this. It's on pump down, so it'll probably run for a minute or so and then turn on. Test we've got the overloads wired right. If I push that in, that'd be the, that's the sort of the same as if they've tripped, so they work. It's a Bristol compressor. Bristol, they make their own. It's another fridge company, do milk tanks. They make their own condensing units. They've got like a little fabrication department. Um, not bad little units really, apart from Bristol stuff, they're not my favourite brand, but I mean, just a bit noisy there. Um, right, well that seems to work. So we've labelled up the uh, um, panel there. So we'll check that that other one does the lower unit, and then we'll labour that as well. That'll just help us out now the time we're here. There we go, that's just started up. We just turn the tank on. Um, so if we flick this breaker here, that bottom unit should come on. It does. So turn it off, it goes off. Back on again. So that kind of proves that we'll, we'll label that one up as well. Should be pumping down now. I'll just turn the tank off. Can't run it for very long. It's got no milk in it, so you can just sort of run it for a minute or two. And then we'll have a look at these two just while we're here. Give them a once over. Okay, that's that done. What I usually do, uh, probably have your gloves on, would be a better idea, but if you go around the edge, just check you haven't got any wires trapped in it. Get some out of sight, you've got a little loop just stuck, sticking out the side. But I'd probably say keep the gloves on for that in case you're going to give yourself a shock. So that's gone all right. Uh, just have a look at these now. Okay, should we put this on deep cool? That should bring the uh, cooling in. Got the panels going around. So that's a top 
in it. It's on R22, so there's not a lot we can do with them. Let's get some heat in there. So it was have to run a bit really to tell a few bubbles. I wouldn't worry if there's one or two bubbles in there. sealant dries out around the plug and they start leaking but that needs to be done I think. I've got new, I think we've oops, got new plugs in there a few years back. Uh, back when you could still work on this stuff. Yeah we had a new suction valve on there. Remember that right now. And we had dryer, new dryers. Um, I think we've done a crankcase heater on one of them. Okay, airflow through them. I mean, they've got this board in here, so it's not great for airflow anyway. But they're milking goats, so the goats don't milk very quickly, so you don't need a very big unit on there. If you were milking cows, the milk would go in the tank a lot quicker, and you'd need these would work a lot harder to try and keep up with it. Right, they check out okay. We've had a look at the capacitors um, on the fan motors. They're, they're still in spec. I think we changed them years ago. Um, anyway, when I've finished, I usually go around and um, I'll sort of check that's on, that one's on, make sure I haven't left anything off. And then check here the breakers on, that breakers on, that breakers on. Um, these these two are on because we had those turned off. Just worth that little extra walk around just to make sure you don't get caught back for something stupid. Right, I should have said um, the other thing to check is make sure the fans are going around the right way because obviously uh, they might be three phase, they might be single phase. You never know with these units. Um, I suspect those ones are probably three phase. A lot of the Copeland ones are all single, so they can put fan speed controls that's on there cheaply. Um, but yeah, you always, if you've been messing around with three phase stuff, putting new contactors in or stuff like that, you really want to make sure you've got the fans running in the right direction. This is really quiet for a Friday, so. What most people are doing as they're told, staying at home. You're allowed out to do a bit of exercise and you're allowed out to go sort of um, food shopping. That's it, unless you've got a, well it's a bit of a grey area with the jobs because they say you should work from home if you're able to, but if you can't, you can go to work. And then they also say that the only people going to work is um, should be people in the health service and police and things like that. So it's a bit of a grey area as to what you should be doing, whether you should be doing anything at all. Um, roundabout we're coming 
actually go through the centre of the roundabout, there's a shortcut to get you up onto the dual carriageway, which is where that blue car has just come from now. So that, that, that bit there is actually through the centre of the roundabout. McDonald's over there, I think that's shut. I think all the McDonald's have shut. All the hotels are shut. It's better cost of coffee shut on the left there. Windscreen's getting worse. I had a bad day last week. I had a stone hit the windscreen right near the edge and it's set a crack off. It's about a foot long now. And I hit a pothole and I put two flat spots in the wheels on the passenger side. So I've got, I've got to get two new wheels, new set tyres. Windscreen's on the way out.
out ATS. I think it's only sort of food places and essential things that are allowed to be open. The takeaway places can open up, I think. Um, but no restaurants, I don't think it's, only, it's got to be all sort of. Some of, the, some of the restaurants have gone with doing sort of selling their stuff um, just for takeaway. Enough of me wittering on, I think. That's that crack. Um, and it's grown today from there. Well, I've put a pen mark all the way along here. So it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> 